Hey guys, uh, what is up youth baseball parents, coaches, and possibly players. Today I'm gonna go over uh, my youth baseball glove recommendations, okay? Um, when you have kids and a baseball glove, the biggest issue that you need to pay attention to is the pliability of the glove. And what I mean by that is the ability for a small hand with a small forearm to squeeze it and retract it, okay? That's the biggest thing that you need to look at. With that said, this is my glove. It's a Rawlings Golden Glove. It's made with thick, strong leather. I don't recommend a glove like this for a youth player. It's an expensive glove, and, and if you buy a glove like that, you're gonna regret it. Uh, kids will not have the strength to do that or the strength to do that. So, the gloves I do recommend, and I have three of them here, and we've used them with all of our kids, is all of them are Mizuno, and not just Mizuno, but they are the Mizuno Power Clothes. These gloves are made of flimsy materials. I'm surprised that they're still alive with no problems, but when you feel it, it's very flimsy, okay? But the benefit of this is that your little guy is gonna be able to command the glove, okay? And that's why I recommend the Mizuno Power Clothes. Um, if they are T-ball, four, five, Six, I would probably go with a nine inch, which is what I have here. Uh, at about seven or eight, I would probably switch to a 10. And then from there, you should have a feel for what you're doing. Um, and also, obviously, if you have players with bigger or smaller hands, you're gonna wanna consider that. As far as breaking in the glove, even though these are very pliable gloves right out the gate, there's a couple tips that I have for you. Some people are gonna tell you to stick it in the oven or the microwave. I haven't done that, so I'm not gonna endorse it or tell you not to do it. You can read about that on Google. I can, I'm gonna tell you what I do. I personally think that when you're getting a glove, you need to get it far enough ahead of time to give it a good break-in process. That's the safe thing to do, and I say safe because in baseball, we're throwing rocks at each other, okay? These are hard, and when they hit you, they hurt a lot, okay? So you need to take the safety of your player seriously, break in their glove, and make sure they have a command of the glove before they get out there using regular baseballs. If your player is shuddering when the ball comes to them, you can't be using the regular baseballs yet. You need to be using uh, an Incrediball, or my recommendation with brand new players is balled up socks. Give me a thumbs up, by the way, if you like that tip. That's how you teach young kids. And by the way, if you have a really little kid, like a t-baller, and they're first learning how to um, catch, instead of putting a glove on them, just tell them, say, I'm gonna throw this balled up sock at you, and I want you to let it hit you on the nose. And they need to get into a habit of doing that, getting the nose in front of it, get the nose in front of it. And then eventually say, listen, now instead of uh, letting it hit your nose, I want you to let it hit the palm of your hand. So they'll shuffle left to right, they'll let the hip sock hit the palm of the hand. Eventually you work up and you get to the point that you put the glove on, they're catching it in the web of the glove, trapping it, and maybe trapping it with a second hand as well once they get used to it. So always make sure that safety is a big priority in baseball because if you hurt your player, it's gonna be six months to a year before they get back to where they are today where they're not afraid of the ball anymore. So. I would tell any youth parent to make, um, make your player not get hurt if you want them to advance quickly. With that said, I'm gonna go back to the glove. Um, so breaking them in, um, ball in the glove, put a chip clip on it, let this sit, oops, let it sit with the ball in the glove and a chip clip on it or rubber bands for like a week, okay? And you may benefit from getting the glove wet and then letting it sit with the ball in the pocket wrapped Ultimately, we, what we want is we want to create a situation where the ball, when the glove sits by itself, it's either thumb to pinky, like that, or it's thumb to ring finger. We want it to sit like that on its own, okay? Once you've let it sit for like a week uh, with a ball in it, then you want the player, who by this time should be comfortable packing the glove, I call that packing the glove, where you get your fingers in there deep, and they're gonna to wanna to sit around all day while watching TV, whatever. And we want them to just basically beat the pocket with mallet. You can get a mallet like this at a hardware store for like three bucks. Uh, you can buy a special mallet for doing this at better sporting goods stores for like 30, but I think it's a waste of money. This will do fine, plus I can use it for other projects. If this helps, uh, give me a like, 
If you want to see more videos like mine, hit subscribe. If you have a question, put it below. I will do my best to answer it. And if I can't, I'm going to count on other people watching this to answer some questions below. Have a great season, guys. Keep those kids safe. Give them what they need, and they will go far.